I'm gonna say like, like a bundle. bundle. It's like a bundle. A bundle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you dropped your bundle. Yeah. I wish it was an album. It was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I. There's just so much that happens behind closed doors. Di I'm diving into my projects this year. I even felt myself losing myself. Ew, I'm crying. I'm going to stop. Hey everyone, I'm Erin Ashley Simon. I'm a broadcaster, entrepreneur, and a cultural disruptor who's redefining what it means to be a creator. Welcome to Real Gems. I create this podcast for creators to be themselves, be honest, and share the ups and downs of their careers. Real Gems will bring you closer to your favorite creators in entertainment, music, gaming, and beyond. The guests on this show will be talking about their wins, their losses, as well as the people who have helped them to pave the way. This season, creators will be sharing the pivots and transitions that have led them to where they are now. This episode, we'll be hearing from a guest who has pivoted in their career to focus on being happy as well as on their mental health. Today, we're speaking with Dinah Jane, who is a singer, songwriter, artist, and a former member of Fifth Harmony. She is now a solo artist and has been featured in songs with French Montana, Daddy Yankee, Ty Dolla Sign, and more. Let's give a warm welcome to Dinah. It's good to have you. Thank hey. you for joining. Thanks for having me. I know. We were having a great conversation about Puerto Ricans right before oh this gosh. show. <laughs> I don't want to get too hot again. Come on out. I know. I just cooled off. We're talking about going to Harlem. I mean, maybe one day we'll. Maybe one know. day. We, we don't know. know. If you if you want if you're wondering why I'm in um, Harlem in the summer, ask her. Like, yeah, she's the reason why I went to Harlem for the summer. <laughs> Yeah, she just gave me some tips. <laughs> inspiration. Inspiration. Uh, Speaking of inspiration, it comes in all different shapes and forms. And so I'm very curious, what inspired you, this whole career path that you had? You've been in the industry for a while. What yeah. started it for you? Uh, do you want the long version or the short version? I got time. <laughs> I have time. You have time? <laughs> yes, okay. I do. <laughs> Sorry, I my I sound like this a little bit right now because the weather kind of messed up my voice. But, um, okay, long version. Well, the full story. I was I remember being in my room, always singing at a, like a very young age, and I came from a musical family, so um, there was about probably twenty seven of us at the time living in one home, and it wasn't like this like nice massive home. It was literally like only a few people could stay, in, but we made it work. Um, so yeah, I'm Polynesian and my mom sings, her brothers sing, and I was just always surrounded by music. So I knew that one day I wanted to be a singer. And I feel like at a young at that time, your parents ask you like, hey, what do you want to be one day? Um, you want to be a doctor? You want to be a teacher? And I said, no, I want to be a singer. So I always knew in my heart I wanted to be a singer. And um, being that I started with my mom and her brothers, you know, having that background, um, at the age of 10, 11, I really got serious and I told my mom, I cried to them and I was like, mom, dad, I want to be a superstar. <laughs> and they're like, what, do you really? And my dad made a phone, a few phone calls. He called some of his really good friends from high school, from college, and they were in the industry. So um, this uncle of mine, his name's Big Dave, and he took a shot at it and he's like, bring her over here, Oos, like, I got you, I got you. And I started in a garage. So I was doing like some, I, some of my fans know, um, Poison by Beyonce was like one of my first covers I did. Oh. Um, Leona Lewis, Better in Time. I, that's these are like songs I started with and yeah. I thought it was so cool like starting off with like two viewers seven it started getting bigger and bigger and I was like oh my gosh I have a, like some people like me <laughs> and um yeah I took it seriously from there on my parents um worked my dad worked about two three jobs at the time my mom became a stay-at-home mom because she was dedicating her time and devotion to me pursuing this dream so that's something I really cherish is my parents believing in me and even though I lived in this Mass, I mean, I lived, in, I lived in this home with X amount of people. Uh, you would think that family would be would have your back. You would be like, oh my gosh, man, my niece got it. Da 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 da. Uh, I feel like my home at the time it prepared me for the real world. That not everyone is going to hold it down for you, like believe in you the way you think that you would want it to be. Um, so I'm just grateful I had my immediate family to give me the courage to believe in myself and be like, you got this. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like everyone, I feel like everyone pick, paints their home to be like, oh my gosh, massive home. I painted out for years to be a picture perfect home. And it really wasn't that. So there was a lot of tears, a lot of discouragement, a lot of like fear, like, am I going to make it? Am, 
I'm, I started believing things that they would say about me. And um, through it all, it, it kind of um, encouraged me to try out for The X Factor. So I tried out for The X Factor. I tried out for a couple shows, but when I did X Factor, lucky me, I ended up in a girl group. And um, I'm grateful for that, for what we built with each other. I feel like none of us would have made it that far if we didn't have each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, this industry is really hard. So yeah. it's not like, oh, you just sleep and wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm a superstar. You know, it's not that easy. Yeah. There's a lot of hard work that goes on behind it. A lot of tears, a lot of things, a lot of business, um, a lot of business issues that you're going to come across. Mm -hmm. And I initially went into this just wanting to be a singer. I was just like, I just want to be a singer. I just want to have fun. That's all I want. I know I love it. But the business part of it is what scared me. I was like, I don't, I can't carry this. This is a lot. Yeah. I just want to, like, no one, no one um, educated me on it. And um, I just learned through it with the girls in the girl group I was in. And we had each other. The beautiful part about it is that we had each other. And then now, I'm now that I am a solo artist, um, I had that background, that little boot camp stage where now I know what to expect, what to expect from people, people I come across, and now I'm educated on how to carry myself, how I want to carry my business moving forward. So here I am now, a solo artist, and just ready to drop more music as I go. So I, I love the part where you talked about having uh, family and people who can help with believing in you. Mm -hmm. And I also think that another part of that process is us as individuals believing in ourselves because in entertainment, it can be challenging because, mm -hmm. you know, the part of the business side is people are always critiquing you, mm -hmm. always assessing if you're good enough, mm -hmm. always talk about relevancy and all these different things. So what was that journey for you when it came to you really believing yourself throughout that entire process? Oh, that's a great question. Um... I feel like that's still something I face to this day, even though I had like these big dreams and aspirations growing up. Um, I had a community of people that believed in me. And it was wild because people would pray for me like my grandma. I would like, uh, I don't want to cry. Uh, I was trying to audition for this school, right? Uh, for OSHA. It's a mm -hmm. performing arts school down in Orange County. And it was something as simple as that where she would literally get on her knees and be like, we have to pray, we have to pray, we have to pray. You can do it, you can do it. And we would fast together almost every weekend, every Sunday. And we were just, you know, she believed in me so much. So like I said, I had a community of people that believed in me. But deep down, I would question myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into? Am I going to make it? Is, is this going to work? Um, but to have that support from certain people really kind of uh, propelled me into, you know, you can do it. You can definitely do it. And it took time. It's not like it happened overnight or like, I know I'm going to make it. It wasn't like the surety, like, oh, I'm going to yeah. make it, you know. Um, it came with practice, I will say. I still face that to this day because, you know, this industry is not easy. It's, it's sink or swim. And right now I'm going into this year of betting on myself. And you have to go 100%. You can't go in half ass and be like, uh, is, am I going to make it? Is it going to work? You really have to build a foundation of people around you to, to give you that confidence and be like, girl, you're in the right place at the right time. And I think God is just so good. He is so good to me because he reminds me in certain ways where like there'll be certain signs I come across and I'm like, that's my sign. Mm -hmm. Reminder. Um, I... There's just so much that happens behind closed doors. And when the noise tries to distract you, I love when I have little reminders or, or people that come to me and be like, you're doing fine. Just a little pat on the shoulder, like you're on your way. Don't get distracted. I'm right here. It's just that surety. And um, I've lost a lot of people too. I would say people in this life and then people who have moved on into this ne in the next life. And I feel my guardian angels always protecting me and giving me that assurance like you're okay I got you you're doing just fine you're at the right place at the right time and even though I've lost certain people in this life who which hurts but um I know in due time that they will come back and you still feel that love that that support that you know people that you started with will always circle back at one point and they have and it's been beautiful so I love where 2023 is leading me mm -hmm. um I've gained a lot of clarity and a lot of a better perspective of my journey and where I'm headed. Does your does your culture contribute to like the support and belief system that you have? Heavily. Definitely. Um 
I am Polynesian, also I'm Tongan. And um, it's something that I kind of struggled with growing up in this industry because this is not like no cookie cutter shit. This, th this industry is not like, oh, it's all ro daisies and roses. Um, my culture definitely played a huge part in it because I live and breathe it every day. Mm -hmm. And what was scary starting off in you know the public eyes that people didn't really know how to identify me. They thought like I was Latina or I was black, and I was like, okay, yeah. But and that's okay if you are. <laughs> oh, right, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I ain't mad at that either. Okay. <laughs> but um, I kind of had like an identity crisis because mm -hmm. I knew that it came from a very small um, island of people. So there's not really many of us we come from minorities. So trying to fit in with an audience where there's like many, like men, there's a huge Latin market, there's huge black market, there's huge everything. And coming from a small uh, popularity of people, I didn't know if I should go for that or just go for, you know, what people are identifying me as. And whenever I'd say Tongan, you know, sometimes it gets exhausting. Like, oh, what, are, what is that? What is that? Mm -hmm. And how I'd compare, I'd be like, oh, yo, it's like Hawaiian. It's like The Rock. He's Samoan, like stuff like that. You know, the tribal, yeah. like something super like plain just to make them understand like where, where what I am. Um, but now I'm definitely tapping into it even more. I mean, not that I'm barely tapping. I've always I have always have. It's just that di I'm diving into my projects this year of accepting who I am and I want people to accept that too that I'm not what they think I am I am who I am and I've been this girl this whole time it's just time that she's blossomed and bloomed into this person and um being that representation for other brown skin girls out there so no I, I feel you 100 percent on that because you know obviously uh, out exterior wise people always you know I'm black right and yeah. that's the first thing they go to but I always have to correct people and say mm -hmm. I'm an Afro-Latino because that Puerto Rican side is is something that's still important to me because right. my mom's Puerto exactly. Rican yeah. and and it's something that I'm very proud of mm -hmm. and even when I was a kid going through like the identity crisis like mine was a little bit different of like f not feeling so tied to the black side and not yeah. feeling so tied to the Hispanic side yeah. but I do feel that sense of responsibility when it comes yeah. to representation and, and being that individual that younger girls can look up and be like that's someone who looks yeah. just like yeah. me. Um, have you ever had that experience? Um, yes. I would say there's this New Zealand artist. Her name is Aradna. I always give her credit because, yeah, I was like about 10 years old when she dropped her album. And I was like, who is this? And people in our community are like, oh, she's Samoan. She's Indian. Like, she's cool. And I, I started listening to her stuff. And I was like, whoa, she can do it. So can I. I mean, I always idolize Beyonce and, you know, the top of the top, like Mariah Carey, like, um, Lauren Hill and whatnot, but when it came to someone of your own kind, it still gives me chills to this day. Like it gets me teary eyed that I was able to identify myself with someone of my own kind. And um, what hit me more was when I was 15 and I had a Barbie. I had a Barbie of me, and um, I went home and all my cousins, mind you, I lived with like 27 people. So majority of those 27 people were 18 kids. And I'm the oldest of those grandkids. So all my first cousins, like all my girl cousins, like, oh my gosh, I have a Dinah Jane Barbie. I want to be Dinah. I want to be Dinah. And just hearing that made me so proud to be Tongan, like just to be an Islander. And um, I knew it wasn't just me, but other um, younger Islander girls were just proud to be like, that's me, you know, just to, just to see that for myself and hear it for myself, it made me realize like, damn, I definitely have responsibility here and I'm sticking to it. And you're inspiring so many young girls and young ladies mm -hmm. because of what you've done in, when, in your career with the group and now as a solo artist. And yeah. what, what was the decision behind that? What was the process behind you deciding like, okay, it's time for me to go on my own mm -hmm. and, and do my own thing? I think it was a mutual agreement between us all. I still remember we gave, we had a phone call between each other and um, we just told each other, like, you know, we've been in this for a while. I'm the youngest of the bunch, so I am I was 15 when I started with the girls. Uh, the oldest was probably like 19, 18. But um, we were in this, like, working so hard, so hard. We were making so many sacrifices. We were barely home for our family. Anytime there was like a funeral, a birthday, anything, we weren't, we weren't present and we were on the road with each other. So having that friendship and building that family, um, that family dynamic between each other was so solid and I'm grateful for it. But um, 
at one point we wanted to you know fly off and do our own thing at one point because we did start off as solo artists when we got into the show so at one point yeah we were all gonna get to this point where we said we need to take a time out and give in to ourselves that we missed out on mm -hmm. because you know the group had it has its own identity the group in, in its whole self but um as individuals i even felt myself i, I even felt myself losing myself like oh. i didn't know like we were playing with so many sounds and different um genres like playing around and whatnot but i started losing my touch i was such a powerhouse and such a vocalist that i couldn't give so much of myself into these songs mm -hmm. and there were there was a time i remember so vividly i was in the booth and when I came out, I knew I killed my shit. I knew I did my <laughs> part like, and I, I delivered. It. Yes, <laughs> I knew I delivered on this ballad. And then the person that made this comment didn't even come to me and tell me it. One of my homegirls came to me in the group. She's like, I'm so mad. I was like, why are you mad? Like, what's wrong? I'm confused. She's like, they said that you're too, you're too soulful and they're going to remove you into the next part. Like, they're going to give you a, um, the verse instead of the chorus. And I was like... Wait, really? Like, oh. I was confused that yeah. being too soulful was too much for a record or too much t for a group. Mm -hmm. And if that was the case, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I, I know I'm not doing something wrong, but there must be something wrong. And um, that's when I came to the realization that I need to do my own music at one point and I need to ha make it happen before I lose my touch because I'm already losing myself. But in the midst of it all, I still, w when it came to live shows, um, I felt like, I felt like I was letting all those comments that I would get behind closed doors that no one knew about, I would let it out on that stage and like, oh, you said I was too soulful? All right, I'm going to deliver here and I'm going to let you hear what is too soulful then. I'm going to give it to the audience because the audience agrees that I'm great. <laughs> I'm not too soulful. They want the soul, actually. Yeah. So I'm definitely tapping into that now and into my music. Um, I think it's just important to just be heard and be seen and never something, I, something that hits me uh, or has stuck with me is to never dim your light for others. Never dim your light, never dim your talent for nobody. Um, and yeah, because that's a disservice to yourself. Yeah, and also, you, you never want to dim your light because those who aren't afraid of your light will come to the light because they see you shining, they see the person you are, and mm -hmm. so they're going to gravitate towards you. And then those who want to dim your light, they're going to naturally go away because yeah. they can't handle that light. Yeah, amen. And, you know, listen. Oh, retweet. You to, retweet. <laughs> No, but I, that's something I had to deal with as well. And, and I don't know mm -hmm. that through that process if it was similar for you where you're like, okay, I don't want to be too much. I don't like, I want to shine. I want to be me. Mm -hmm. But it's like that balance of, okay, I don't know if I can be fully me right, right now. Because right. you feel whether it's the comments or whether mm -hmm. it is the, the people who are part of the decision making process, it's like you don't want to upset them, but yeah. then you feel like you're not being true to yourself. Exactly, exactly. I'm glad you could relate because, yeah. yeah, I think it just comes with us being women. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it is, too, just trying to, you know, fit in. And especially you're also in the industry yourself, so you would definitely understand what it's like. Yeah, and I also think, like, with age, mm -hmm. you know, I think anyone who's – I feel like every single person has the same pattern of when you yeah. get in – you're just happy to be here yeah and then you kind of go with the flow but then as you continue on you're like okay like you said something just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. and then it, it causes us to then decide to make a pivot yeah decide to adapt and change yeah. in a direction that makes us more fulfilled and, and yeah. happier mm -hmm. and you've done that and yeah. you released your first album and, and during well, that i didn't drop an album it was more of like a Oh, I want to say like, like a bundle. bundle. It was like a bundle. A bundle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you dropped your bundle. Yeah. I wish it was an album. It was supposed to be. <laughs> but we're here now, so I'm fine. Uh, yes, I'll, we're here I'll now. I'll save it for later. You're able to drop your bundle. Mm -hmm. um, such a unique word. Bundle. I know, right? Bundle. 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 It was going to be an EP, but then I was like, no, nah, don't call it EP. It's only three songs. Make it a bundle because it's just a three song. It's a trifecta. Yeah. Ew, did I say threesome? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is the wrong uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is real life. This is real entertainment. Woo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> you, you dropped your bundle and then you had your new lane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm going to drink to that. Hold no. Up. Listen, that shows your personality. I think that's great. You should show your personality. You should mm. show, like, this is what happens in great conversations. <laughs> and so you had your, your lane, and then you decided to take a break. Mm -hmm. So 
what inspired you to take that pause and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to relax a little bit right now? Okay, this is this is where it gets really deep. You thought I was deep earlier. It's definitely not that deep. Um, <laughs> like you said earlier, you said it comes with age. Um, I was 23 when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And um, right before COVID was even announced, I had a tour announced, like a world, a world tour. I was about to open up for someone on her tour. And a lot of great things were just happening. Like everything was just coming together. Like, oh my gosh, I'm coming out the gates with this. I'm proud of the projects I'm making. I was supposed to drop an album during that time, a full album, maybe length album, like 11, 12 songs. And everything was just in motion. I just felt like it's, it's happening, it's happening. And of course, COVID was announced and it pushed back everything. So I was grateful though that, you know, I had the setback to be with my family. Yeah. I missed out on a lot, you know, throughout my career, being with the girls. And then even before that, like I was just always, always on the go. And um, everything just felt so perfect. I felt kind of robotic in some kind of way. And in the midst of that, I said, I need to pause. I need to sit back and fix the issues that I was avoiding all this time. Mm. I was always pushing this problem to the side. And, and it was also me. I never really had the backbone to stand up for myself with certain situations. Mm. Um, and also such decisions were always made for me throughout my career. Decisions were always made for me, which I'm grateful for. But being that I was 23 now, I knew I was becoming a woman. And being that I was becoming a woman, I wanted to make my own decisions. I wanted to say yes and no to certain things. I was tired of saying yes, 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 yes to everyone. And just by nature, I'm such a people pleaser. I'm very nice. I just go with the flow and easygoing. And whenever someone would say something, I'd be like, okay, let's do it. And I wanted to cut that habit. Yeah. So the moment I wanted to cut that habit, people weren't happy about that. Mm, um, okay. At that time, it was like summertime. And um, my label was telling me, you need to drop an album. I wanted to drop the album so bad, but it was songs that I wasn't proud of. I was like, no, this is not my story. And I was going to name this album True Story at the time. Maybe I still can. I don't know. I definitely changed it, guys, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> I was going to name it True Story because it was just everything I was going through. Relationships. I was dating galore, girl. I was just like dating everyone. <laughs> I was not dating everyone, first of all. Okay, stop. <laughs> Let me clear you the air. You were just being young and having fun. That's young it. and having fun, That's yes. It. So I was dating. In the middle of dating, um, I was also facing family issues. And like you said, um, my culture plays a huge part with me. And being the eldest daughter, um, she has to be the most forgiving. She has to be the most obedient. She has to be the one that sets the tone for the family dynamic. And I didn't want to be that no more. I said, mm. I'm already giving so much of myself. This is it not enough what I've been doing. And um, I love my family as much as I love them. It, they were my anchor, but then at some point they also became my struggle. Yeah. Um, and it's not a bad thing. I think this is something that's, a, this is a real conversation and it's not like, oh, I hate my family. I never uttered the words, I hate my family. Yeah. I know they're my backbone at the end of the day. Families will always go through the process of like love and hate, love and hate, still love you, I'm still here. But um, that's kind of what was my setback. I was just exhausted, is the word. I was very exhausted and I was dating also at the same time. So even though I was in a relationship, it wasn't the best decision I should have made at the time, but it was also my escape. I was always running. I was always running away from my issues. And the only way I could run was jumping into a relationship to save me. I was just looking to be heard, looking to be saved, just looking to be seen. And no one was listening. No one was listening. No one wanted to hear me out. And it was even at, to a point where I felt like life was pointless. Mm. And, um, just in these past two, three years, I am grateful. Even though I went through this really ugly time, I'm grateful that I went through it and got these cuts and bruises because I now have so much strength and so much wisdom that I gained from it. Um, I didn't think I'd make it make out of make it out of that time, but that dark time. But I had a set of people and team that got me back on my feet, 
and there was a song there's a few times they would like push me to the studio like you need to get this out let it out it's the perfect time and I, said, I don't care for it I don't want to be a singer no more I don't I don't want to I don't even I didn't even want to listen to music that's how bad it was wow. I didn't want to listen to music I was just scared I was scared but I also just wanted to just not have any of those elements everything that I dreamed and was so passionate about I didn't care for it because nothing mattered. All that I cared for was my mental and my heart. Ew, I'm crying. I'm going to stop. Um, it's okay. I do feel healed. I will say I feel healed better than it was before. But um, it's still a journey that I'm on. And there was a song that I came across called Maybe Later I Will. And with this song, it spoke volumes of my story where I, it literally says, like, maybe later I'll face, the, face my face my problems. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to face my problems at the time. So I'm very like, I'm not a confrontational person. If you really get to know me, I'm not really like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm more so like easygoing, go with the flow. And this, like I said, the song spoke volumes to me. So what better way to have a song that is your story and release it? Um, funny thing is, this song was actually pitched to someone else. And I said, no, 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 let me try. Let me try it before you let go and release it to the person. <laughs> And um, yeah, I took a shot at it and now it's mine. So I'm ready for people to just dive in and get to know me better on a deeper level. Um, especially uh, especially because I'm not an open book. I'm not an open book on social media that, that people expect me to be. Yeah. I'll just give you like the cute things, like hot photos, eh. um, <laughs> you know, little, little gems like that. But I never allow people in and I, I allow people in through my music. And that's where my strong point is, is my music. So that's my PSA. Go to my music and you'll definitely know what a girl's going through. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love that little gem thing you just said. Oh, Put that in. <laughs> you hear that? You hear, uh, I got you, girl. <laughs> I, what you said, like, I, I relate to it because that was something that I struggled with, too. Like, being a people pleaser, being someone mm -hmm. who always put family first. Mm -hmm. And within the past two, three years, I had to learn how to set boundaries better yes affirm those boundaries mm -hmm. and then deal with the conflicts that came with people not respecting boundaries mm -hmm. and that was challenging Amen. for me because one i was always like someone who like i i struggled with conflict like i didn't yeah. like conflict and oh my god yeah, You're just like I, 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 I didn't like conflict and um you know the past two three years i had to work with my therapist in terms of setting it staying with it and understanding that all of the kind of the struggles are coming from setting boundaries mm -hmm. it's a she said it in a very interesting way it was a good thing because it means that i'm sticking to those boundaries and she's like you're gonna have people who are gonna test you yeah. because they're so used to getting what that, they want from mm -hmm, you that mm -hmm. now they realize they can't yeah and she's like you've got to stay firm it's going to be hard but it's going to be better after because they're they're going to know that they can't test you anymore yeah. Who's your therapist? <laughs> well, her name is. Who's <laughs> asking for a friend? Um, can you... <laughs> her name is Marie. No, um... that's, you, you hit it right on point. Yeah. Um, it's the boundaries and like it's it's the boundaries and just being yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's hard for people to accept that, you know, like it's hard for them to accept that you're now in this new womanhood or just you being this person in this time and space. But um. At some point, they have to learn to adapt because you adapted long enough. You adapted to their their limits and what they expected of you. But yeah, like you said, yeah, at some point, it's time. You were enough. You were doing more than enough, you know? And at one point, I had to tell myself, like, you did a lot. You did more than enough. It's not your fault. Yeah. Now it's time to just dive in and give in to yourself. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It's not selfish to put you first. It's no. never selfish to put you first. So. No. And boundaries are healthy mm -hmm. you know they're not selfish they're healthy for you and they're healthy for the other individuals yeah. as well and I, i'm very curious when you went through this process of changing and setting those specific boundaries because you changed as a person did it change your creative process for the song oh great question did it did it change my creative process i think musically Maybe, yeah, maybe a tad bit, maybe a tad bit, just the way I carry myself and the way I was um, uh, layer, layering like certain elements to the song. Um, I would even ask the producer, like, can I add this? Like, can I do this? That's not like me. Because mind you, this song, I didn't write the song. So the song was given to me. Mm, okay. 
And when I heard the demo, I said, okay, that's really nice. I loved it. Usually when people give you a song, uh, you stick, stick strictly to what the producer and the writers want. And um, that's usually how the process is. But uh, I asked him, like, can I add this? Can I add these little whispers? And to me, that was out of my comfort zone because sometimes I just allow, I don't want to cut, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. <laughs> I don't want to be like, give me my song back. You know, <laughs> they could do that. But um, he, thankfully, uh, granted, he let me add my little flair, my little twist to it. And um, I, I just felt good. Like, I felt confident with what I was doing with the song and tapping into, like, it just makes me feel like I'm floating and there's just this special vibration about it where the story is just being told through through your skin and that's what i felt it was just speaking to me and w when you hear it when you sing it that's what i feel from it so yeah this song is really special to me so when when you evolved creatively mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. evolved as a person how much to you in terms of how you value this growth, mm -hmm. um, how much did you value in the sense of like, you were able to, I would assume, take more control of, of more things beyond your personal life, probably professionally mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Like how much did you value that overall growth for yourself? I value it so much, but I still get scared. I'm, it's so much power in my hands I didn't realize I had all this time mm. and I'm not like oh like some boss and be like I gotta do this, this give me a better get your shit together like I'm not that type of person but we did a shoot recently where they said this creative like visual and everything is based on you what do you want to do when they put that on me I was like excuse me oh shoot <laughs> <laughs> excuse me you guys are letting me have this much control and this yeah. power it was new to me it was really new to me and as much as they say, like my team wants to say, like you're the boss, be that boss bitch that you are, da da da. It's still a process where I, I'm still learning to own it. I know there's certain parts that I do own and that I'm good at, and I know that I have control over. It, but when they give you that power and control, and they said this is yours, you're the one driving the vehicle now. Because before I had someone driving for me, mm -hmm. because well, in reality too, I don't drive. So <laughs> I was I was used to being a passenger princess. <laughs> So <laughs> it was time for her to be a big girl and step into her own. But yeah, I'm still learning to utilize my power to my best ability. And I value it very much. And I'm, like I said, I'm still learning as I go. So I just healed, girl. So <laughs> please excuse me as I make a few attempts here and there. So <laughs> I, I, I agree. I mean, even for me, right? Like, as I continue to progress in my career, there's, I always tell people there's, despite what anyone says there's always that fear yeah. in the back of your mind mm -hmm. fear of big decisions fear of am i going in the right direction yeah. and I'm, if, am i making the right decisions mm -hmm. am i getting the right people on my team like it's that constant i have to say like i don't know for you but for me it's a little anxiety that comes yeah. with it yeah but it's it's kind of like you kind of have to embrace it in some shape or form bingo so for you, how how has that been embracing the fear, embracing the yeah. unknown? Yeah. It's so funny that you touched base on this because just recently I've been losing sleep, girl. Oh no. I've been losing sleep <laughs> and I've been stressing and people be wondering like, why are you waking up at 3 p.m.? I don't know. I don't know. And then I would tell myself, I don't know, but then I know. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm alone in my room, I know why I'm stressing. I know why there's anxiety. And it's because there is fear. As much as I want to say, like, oh, I'm excited, I'm excited, there's so much fear because, especially with this project, in a sense, it's kind of like the first time it's being done on a platform like this mm -hmm. where I'm stepping out to represent a whole community of people, um, being Polynesian especially. So I don't want to upset nobody. I don't want to um, culture appropriate my own kind at the same time. So I'm, I'm educating myself as I go through the process. And um, even though I've lived in breed, it all my life being Tongan there's so much more to learn there's so much more that I'm diving into and realizing like wow I didn't know that or my family didn't teach me that like I didn't know like this goes years back so um there's so many elements to this process where I am scared and it's okay to admit that and it's okay to say wake up one day and be like what the fuck you know um I'm really excited but in the process of it I'm like you said I'm embracing it I'm embracing the fear. It's not always going to be pretty. And through the storm, 
there will be a rainbow at the end of it. So, yeah. Yes. Also, I firmly believe in the phrase, <laughs> let Jesus take the wheel. Amen, because sometimes girl. you just got, you just got you know whatever what's you funny? believe in. You know? This is the most prayerful I've been. This is the most, I've really prayed to God a lot more than I ever before. Yeah. And my family, they're very spiritual. They're very, uh, we're Mormon. So my family's very um, spiritual. And my mom would always tell me, I whenever my mom would tell me like, say a prayer, say a prayer. And I would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying a prayer. No, I'm definitely not saying a prayer. I'm like, man, I know my family's got it. But recently, I just have this urgency of doing it on my own. Yeah. You know, um, I've been doing it on my own and just asking God for his guidance. And there's usually like a formula that like I was, I grew up learning of how to say a prayer. But prayer, it comes in so many so many dimensions and so many unique ways. It doesn't have to be in that formula, formulated way. Yeah. It can be through song. It can through, be through you just talking to him and just being like, God, where am I going? Mm-hmm. What am I doing? And it's just having that personal, you have to make a personal conversation with him. And that's just from my own personal experience. I don't know about everyone else. But um, well, someone once told me that, you know, it's a one-on-one conversation with you and him and no one should deteriorate the way it should be. The way you should carry yourself yeah. with God is how it should be. It should be your own unique way of how you speak to God. And I am grateful for that advice because, like, I feel that he's here all the time. And he, like I said, he'll give me certain signs here and there yeah. that I am in the right place at the right time. And there's times where he'd be like, you need to go. Like, there's that gut instinct where he's yeah. telling you, you mm-hmm. are not at the right place at the right time. You need to run. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to listen to him with these red flags that I come across. Sometimes they're hard to say no to. But, um, yeah, I'm going to listen to God a little bit more and stop being stubborn. <laughs> And stop being such a young girl and running with her heart. You gotta run with your head, girl. Absolutely. <sighs> I mean, for me, I, I'm I'm a spiritual person too, and mm-hmm. I have spirituality in 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 different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I'm Christian, so yeah. obviously I have my own respective relationship with God. Mm-hmm. But then also, my family on my Puerto Rican side is Native American, so yeah. spending time in nature, being ah. around that, is, is it helps to really center me and ground me yeah. towards appreciating the present. Mm-hmm. what I have and being grateful yeah. and and that is so important in that entire journey because I think sometimes like you said we get lost in the sauce especially working in entertainment and, and sometimes we gotta be like all right come back girl like whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> we gotta uh-huh. whoop, just be here um tap in yeah tap in and and tap in with yourself and I think that's that's so 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 crucial mm-hmm. uh do you occasionally during those moments like tap in and say okay how how do I feel like what am I thinking Am I happy? Yeah. You know, do you have those moments of, of seclusion where you're by yourself and you just really tap into those those yeah. emotions and feelings? Oh, yeah. All the time. Um, I have to be my own best friend. Yeah. I have to be and in the middle of me being my own best friend. I have to check on her and ask her, are you okay? How do you feel? Are you happy? Sometimes I'm so moody, too, that I don't realize how I feel. I'm just like... What's wrong with you? <laughs> Maybe you're hungry, you know? <laughs> Maybe I'm hangry. Like, somebody, like, door dashed me some ramen noodles, something. Like, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I, I'll dive into those moments where I'm asking myself, like, are you okay? And I have to be very gentle with myself because I'm also destructible mm. and destructible. So, I, like I said, I, you have to be your own best friend and be patient and give yourself that grace that, you're gonna be okay, and that this isn't the end. Like yeah. you're just going, you're just having a bad day. It's just a day that's passing by, and then you'll start again tomorrow. Absolutely. And one of the ooh, five oh five minutes. <laughs> uh, and one of the quotes, oh, this quote has I don't know, it struck a chord with me. Okay. Sometimes we make mistakes because red flags don't feel like red flags when they feel like home. Ooh. So there's sometimes that we don't identify these red flags because it feels so much. Like home and normal to us. Familiar, yeah. Yes. Mm, I love that quote. Yeah, that that hit me hard when I when I first. I'm just letting it sink in because it's literally something I'm living right now. Yeah. You know, so. Um, it's tough because these red flags, like you said, they do feel like home, and it comes with practice of saying no. Yeah. Saying no more. That's enough. Don't allow that. Stop accepting that um, or even stop accepting the bare minimum. That's something you're used to. That's yeah. something that you've only known. Um, there were a few times that I was in certain situationships or relationships where 
Um, I didn't know how to say no. I was just too weak. I was too weak to leave, too weak to run, because those red flags, like you said, felt like home, and it just felt safe. It felt safe at the time. But the ones that you feel uncomfortable with, the people that enter into your life and feel uncomfortable with, are actually the ones trying to break those those barriers, break those boundaries, break you out of that habit of accepting that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, there were a few times that I probably didn't realize that this person was a good gem. I'm gonna use gem more often. <laughs> was a was a gentleman, and I just wasn't used to that. I didn't know how to take it. I was just like, "You're so good to me. I'm not used to that. I'm yeah. not used to this." Like, why are you so good to me? I don't deserve this. When in reality, you do deserve that queen treatment, you know? So I'm learning to say no and accept what is and what God is allowing into my life. And when a good person comes across you, identify that and accept it and be like, wow, I deserve that. Yeah. You're dropping some amazing gems. <laughs> I don't know. Don't be surprised but, if we write a, a theme song for you. I know, right? Gems, gems. <laughs> But for, for the viewers, what is one gem, one piece of advice that you really want them to take away from today's episode? Uh, to take away from today's episode. There were so many gems, though. I'm I like, know. did I run out? Um, a special gem to take away from this whole thing, I would say, is to build. Ew. Oh, my gosh. Did you see that? No. <laughs> you didn't see nothing. <laughs> nope, good, good, nope. good. I'm just speaking so fast. Um to put yourself first. It is not selfish to put yourself first. Oh, Daniel, do you want to say it again? Like the real gems I want to... Oh, the real gems. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. The real gem that I would love to share with today's episode is to put yourself first. Do not be afraid to put yourself first. It is not wrong. It is okay, and it is... We need to accept that you are the priority here, and people need to accept that. Um, so yeah, that's a good one. Put yourself first. And speaking yeah. of put yourself first, what are your social yeah. medias? We got to put you first by promoting. What do you oh. have coming up? I have a song coming really soon. I know my fans hate the word soon, <laughs> but, um, I have a song dropping in X amount of days. I'm going to say days. Yes. In X amount of days. And, um, yeah, just get ready to dive in with this brown skin Polynesian girl. Where it's gonna get exciting. Before I know I was really quiet, but now you guys gonna get sick of me. And I want you to get sick of me. Gotta feed my children and let them know what's coming is some heat. So, yeah. Bringing some heat, bringing some gems, and more yes. importantly, bringing a great personality. Diana, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you to all <laughs> the viewers for tuning in. Make sure you catch next week's episode. You don't wanna miss it. I'm Erin Ashley Simon, and you're here with Real Gems. Yay! Yay! Wow, that felt like...